Hello and welcome to the second part of my tutorial series about the Python basics and yes, for this part I just prepared a little presentation for you. This will be a really short video where I just present the most common built-in data types which are for da data types you maybe even know if you have uh, learned some languages before. This should only be a little overview. We'll have a separate video for any data type. I will make one video for integers and floats because um, they have some operations which work together and some functions which works hand to hand. So you can make easily uh, you can easily make a float out of an integer. But because uh, before you get confused, let's start uh, with the first important things about um, yes the built-in data types. So there are four built-in data types. What are data types? Data types are comparable to variables you learned at school like a equals 4, b equals 2 plus a, and yes, c equals a plus b plus 500. Best comparable to integers and floats which represent numbers. And strings are like, yes, text or like representing text or a list of characters or an array of characters and boolean are like sentences which can be true or false, like it is raining today is true or um, it can be false and you can, can combine two sentences with operations like AND and OR. But before I'm explaining too much, let's start with the integer. Here are some um, yeah, facts about integers. Integers are numbers, whole numbers like minus 7, 4, 500 or 70. A little bit unique to Python is that they have no limit and can be increased or decreased by uh, arithmetic operations like addition, multiplying or dividing. The floats are kind of comparable because they are just floating point numbers like 2.3 which in this case have a max limit which is really high because um, yeah, a floating number uses 64 bits for example, most integers, I guess, I'm not really sure, but I mean, um, I mean to remember integers use 32 bits. I'm pretty sure in languages like C or yeah, Java, your um, integers have a size of 32 bits. I don't know if it's if this also goes for Python, but uh, floats are 64 bits in Python or use uh, 64 bits in Python. Yeah, and they can represent any rational n uh, number, of course, only any rational number which is in the limit I mentioned above. So as already mentioned, um, string is representing a text and is surrounded, and that's important, by quotation marks like um, a single or a double quotation mark, a text or text. Yeah, I missed the ending quotation mark because there's always a quotation mark at the beginning of a string and quotation marks at the end of the string, but you only co can combine similar quotation mark numbers. So um, a string can begin with two quotation marks and end with two quotation marks or a text can begin with one quotation mark and end with one quotation mark, but a text cannot start with one quotation mark and end with two quotation marks. They are, as already said, representing a text and they are a number of different characters including digits. Yeah. Also unique in Python, I don't know any other language which
no characters as a single or unique data type. There's only a string and characters are usually in other languages just a single letter or a single digit or a single space and in Python they are just strings existing out of only one character. Yes. So now let's see how this looks in practice. So here we are again in PyCharm. I already um, wrote three other print functions like print2, print2.5 or print2 is less than three. Let's see um, what it is printing. I already ran the program so you can see if you want to spoil. Um, yes, after printing high world, which is also a string, high world is a string, there are the starting quotation marks and the ending quotation marks. Um, the, pro uh, the program is giving us a 2 and a 2.5 and a 2 because obviously 2 is a smaller number than 3. If we type in minus 3 it should um, give us a false and yes perfect it gives us a false. So we can also like um, you learned it at school you can also declare variables you can name them A and can give them the value like 4 plus 6 and if we print A we will see we will get a 10 because 4 plus 6 is a 10 and we can also ask the type of a variable like type of A and now we are gonna see um, class integer because um, we learn later integers are also classes. What classes are we learn later and yes what we uh, wanna know in this video is just that a is an integer and if we print type of 2 is greater than 1 we will get class type boolean or in short bool. The same goes for a string and yes of course a float. I think it's unnecessary to show this. I would say we see you in the next video and in the next video I also have some little tasks for practice. This stuff was a little bit too simple to imagine any tasks but yes in the next video I will show some tasks. You can type your solution in the comments. There will be an easy task, a more difficult task and a harder task. The next video will just about uh, be just about integers but it will get a little bit more into it so it won't be um, that sketchy as uh, we handled everything in this video. So see you hopefully in the next video. Um, I hope it was kind of understandable what I was saying. Yes, I wish you a wonderful evening, a wonderful morning, whatever time it is while you're watching this video. And yes, see you soon.